Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another video. So I've noticed something lately. Some companies that are developing new hair loss treatments have taken to dismissing finasteride safety as well as its efficacy. It's gotten so bad that one particular company known as Follicum has decided to make one of the worst infographics that I've seen when it comes to comparing other hair loss treatments and their relative safety. In this particular infographic created by Follicum, it compares the safety of oral finasteride to other hair loss treatments that are currently released to the public and some that are in clinical trials. If you're not looking at the screen right now, I'm showing you this particular graph, but I'm going to go through it verbally. What I would say is one of the most striking things on this graph is this KSX826 and how it's listed as an androgen receptor inhibitor. The strange part about this is KSX826, according to the graph, right? It does sound very similar to another molecule. We'll talk about this shortly. It states that this androgen receptor inhibitor can be taken twice orally a day and that it's safer than oral finasteride. That's what this particular infographic from Follicum, the creators of FOL005, and it's supposed to be some sort of osteopotent derivative that can potentially stimulate hair follicles to grow more hair, right? That's what this infographic from this company is saying. Now, KSX826 is likely a misspelling of KX826 pyrolutamide. Pyrolutamide, as many of you know, is being developed by Kintor Pharmaceuticals for the treatment of acne and androgenetic alopecia. Now, it's not being developed orally as a treatment, but rather topically. So yes, they're testing it as a topical treatment. So I don't know where Follicum is getting these details from, that KSX826 is some sort of oral treatment, and how in any way an androgen receptor inhibitor, when taken orally, could be safer than a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. That's just ridiculous. Like, I genuinely thought that I was, like, going crazy for a second, so I had to do some research to see if there was another drug called KSX826. But no, it really is just pyrolutamide by Kintor. So if somebody were to come across this website, a naive person who's scared of finasteride, they may see that, okay, this infographic from this company that looks very reputable is saying that oral finasteride is not safe. It gives no other additional context. It just says on its infographic that oral finasteride isn't safe whatsoever. But it does say KSX826, an androgen receptor inhibitor, is safe, even though it's still in clinical trials supposedly according to the infographic, right? And then this person would probably go buy the chemical from some company, some gray market lab, and then ingest it. And this would cause a whole host of issues. If you're not looking to become a trans person, go from a male to a female and present yourself as feminine, taking an androgen receptor inhibitor is probably the worst thing you can do. We typically use androgen receptor inhibitors for conditions like prostate cancer, right? Because prostate cancer feeds off of any androgen in the body. Or we use it for people who want to transition, like I said before, right? Men or people who are, I guess you can say masculine, presenting, wanting to become feminine. But pyrolutamide has a very, very low IC50 score. I think it's at 0.28 nanomolars. And to quickly explain what an IC50 score is, the lower the number is, the better the drug is at doing its job. And like I said before, it's an androgen receptor blocker or inhibitor. So this means that at a 0.28 nanomolar IC50 score, pyrolutamide is really, really potent, potentially as strong as DHT or stronger than DHT at blocking the androgen receptor or coming into contact with the androgen receptor. So no, it's not a good idea to use this thing orally. Welcome, this is an insane thing that you have on your website. That infographic is just so, so weird, right? I, I just don't even get it. Now, okay. People make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, sometimes in my comments and in my videos. So I can be generous and say that maybe Follicum made a mistake when it comes to this particular infographic because it is outrageous to suggest something like pyrolutamide, KXA26, which has a lower IC50 score than bicolutamide, which is commonly used for people who want to transition from man to woman or from masculine to feminine, right? And that Bicolutamide itself has a whole host of issues that are cardiovascular, liver toxicity. It's, it's crazy to say that pyrolutamide is safe orally or safer orally than finasteride in that case, right? 
just by using that comparison of bicolutamide, which has a higher IC50 score than pyrolutamide. So essentially, pyrolutamide taken orally, it would be way more effective at making a man essentially transition into a, a feminine person, right? So I find that the insanity of suggesting that it's safer than a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride or even dutastride orally, right? It has to be a mistake. It has to be a mistake, so I'll be somewhat charitable. But then again, I don't have millions of dollars going into a hair loss treatment, so I think Follicum should get its act together and actually fix this. Also, I'm here in the post edit. I want to say thank you to one of my subscribers named Dan Yu because they actually showed me this particular paper or presentation rather from Follicum. And here they show finasteride's, I think, nine month efficacy at only 30% of patients actually getting some sort of hair growth. And then on the website itself, Follicum states that oh, it's actually 40%. But if you continue to read the entire Follicum website, they then say, well, after one year, 50% of people respond to finasteride treatment. That's kind of a weird way of low-balling finasteride's efficacy because we know from the five-year long-term study that people progressively get better and the hair loss is progressively slowed down or maintained. For, for the most part, for most people. And the 10-year Rossi et al. Italian study, as well as the 10-year Japanese study, as well shows that with long-term treatment, most people get stabilization, right? Or improvements of their hair quality. So I think what Follicum is doing is they're trying to lowball the efficacy of finasteride because it is the most popular and also it's off patent, um, androgenetic alopecia treatment. So very shady, and uh, it just doesn't inspire that much confidence in what this company is trying to do. So that makes me now, again, in the post-edit, kind of reevaluate the purpose of that infographic that they have on their website. And what I find weird is that I'm pretty sure Follicum, for their clinical trial of their particular fo uh, product, uh, sorry, product, FOL005, they've only been monitoring it at a four-month efficacy. So that's not really fair to compare that to the heavy hitters. The best thing I think these hair loss companies can actually do, right, is to aim for coexistence. Imagine that these companies advertise that their products can be stacked with traditional minoxidil, or finasteride. It would show that there aren't any harmful interactions or efficacy drawbacks by using one product along with finasteride, minoxidil, or even dutasteride. We know that people are commonly using two hair loss drugs in their stacks, right? It would be the conventional finasteride and minoxidil. So it wouldn't make sense to tell people that, hey, this is not safe. All these other products, even though some of them are FDA approved, they're not safe at all ours is safe. That makes no sense. That's not helping you, and that creates more confusion about what people can actually use and if they can potentially use drugs that would have some sort of, you know, negative interaction with one another, right? I get people asking, if I use finasteride and dutasteride, would it cancel the two out and make them not effective at all? No. I have people asking, if I use minoxidil topically with finasteride, Topically, would that cause minoxidil not to absorb properly because finasteride's there? No. And having these narratives where company A, company B, and company C is trying to make finasteride look like a boogeyman, that it's not safe, and even in Follicum's case, they kind of throw shade at the efficacy of finasteride is ridiculous. Because, well, finasteride's been on the market for decades now, right? Follicum and all these other products, they're in some cases, yet to actually even get on the market. And they haven't been around that long, so how can you properly make any sort of claims of safety? I think they're getting a bit too eager here.